Raspberry Pi is a small microcomputer that can be used for many different things, including a desktop. In this video, I'm going to show you how I used a Raspberry Pi to create a homeschooling computer for my kids to practice things like typing and also to um, view educational videos on YouTube and maybe some non-educational videos as well. Let's jump right in. So here are all the components. Here's a Raspberry Pi 3. Here's the micro SD card that the operating system will live on. This is a USB dongle for the keyboard and mouse that we will hook up to our Raspberry Pi. Alright, so we're going to put the memory card, the SD micro card, which also has the operating system we just put on it. We're going to put that at the bottom of our Raspberry Pi, just like that. And then before we power it up, we're going to put the Logitech USB dongle that will control our uh, mouse and keyboard. Okay, now we're ready to, to add the power and HDMI and get started. Okay, so we're here in what will be a temporary setup for this Raspberry Pi just as we mock it up. I'm going to have my older son install the HDMI cable. Go ahead. Did it. Good job. And now my younger son to install the power, which will... Um, Is it this one? The small one. This one on the side. Need help? Okay, good job. Once you put it in there, you will see the lights click on. And now we're starting to see the operating system boot up. Let's give this a second. I'm not going to cut, so, so just like that, we have an operating system. A very basic way to describe overclocking is having the CPU run faster than it's intended to run. Obviously this will cause heat and so it's recommended that you use a heat sink to offset the extra heat you're going to create by overclocking. The heat sinks I installed came with the kit I bought. As always I'm going to post a link in the description in case you would like to purchase one for yourself. So what I'm doing here is on a forum I found some optimum settings that other Raspberry Pi users have already discovered on how to overclock the Pi with stable settings. I'm going to copy those settings and just paste them into a configuration file. Very simple. So as you can see here I am editing the config.txt file and if you're not familiar with Linux at all you can copy these commands just like I'm doing them on the screen and get good results. I'm going to override the default instructions and add new instructions. In this case, ARM frequency is the CPU frequency, and that's going to be running at 1.3 GHz or 1300 MHz. And we're going to add extra voltage to accommodate for the increase in CPU frequency, along with some other configuration changes I'm not going to get into. Then you control X, press Y to confirm saving, and then enter. All done. Now reboot. So we're all set now um, to use this computer for browsing the internet. My favorite website, YouTube, also a favorite of my kids. It's now usable. Also, there are some built-in games with the version of Raspbian that we downloaded. Minecraft Pi, another favorite of my kids. As we started off the school year this year, we wanted our oldest, who's seven, to learn how to type for a couple reasons. Uh, one, to help him with his reading and his spelling some more. 
Second is to begin practicing a uh, written form of communication, like sending emails, which he's done. So far, so good, and this Raspberry Pi uh, didn't cost uh, much more than $50 if you have a spare monitor and keyboard laying around. If you like this video, please click the like button and be sure to check out some of my other videos. Um, well, that's it. See you on the next project.